If you're considering a cruise to Alaska, the first cruise line that may come to mind is Princess Cruises. But are they really the best cruise line in Alaska? Well, we've just returned from our fifth Alaska cruise and our second with Princess Cruises. And here to give you the honest truth of what it's like cruising to Alaska with Princess Cruises, up next. Welcome aboard cruisers. I'm Don B from Eat Sleep Cruise, where I help you see the world one port at a time. And a special welcome back to our Eat Sleep Cruise subscribers. It is true that Princess Cruises has earned quite a reputation when it comes to cruising in Alaska. And in this video, we'll give you the honest truth of the pros and cons of sailing with the cruise line way up north. When it comes to sailing with Princess Cruises in Alaska, one of the benefits of picking the cruise line is just the options. If you look at the sheer number of vessels cruising in the region, Princess Cruises comes out top with seven ships. That number is matched only by Holland America Line, which comes in a close second place with six ships sailing in Alaska this year. Among those seven ships, there are a variety of ships in terms of size, age, and amenities. If you enjoy mega ships like Lido, there's a ship for you. There is also small, more intimate experiences. And the cruise line has its newest ship, Discovery Princess, cruising in Alaska as well. For us, the obvious choice is the Royal Class, which this year has Discovery, Majestic, and Royal Princess all sailing in Alaska. At over 140,000 gross tons, these are some of the largest vessels that cruise the region. But the cruise line also has smaller ships like Crown Princess, Sapphire Princess, Grand Princess, and Ruby Princess, all sailing from various ports of call. While it is true that many of these ships have similar amenities and still all feature the Princess Cruises traditional style of cruising, what having all these ships really allows Princess Cruises to do, and where the cruise line shines, is offering a variety of itineraries. Princess Cruises offers round trip sailings that depart from Seattle, Vancouver, and even San Francisco. Plus, the cruise line features one way sailings from Anchorage, Vancouver, and vice versa. And it was these various itineraries that really drew us to Princess Cruises in the first place, and one main reason we decided to sail again with them this year. While most of our other cruises have been round trips from Seattle to Vancouver, our cruise this season was a one-way sailing. We really enjoyed getting to experience a bit more of the region with this itinerary. The Voyage of Glacier's itinerary we sailed on also gave us the option to visit not only Glacier Bay, but also the Hubbard Glacier. So when considering an Alaska cruise, one benefit of going with Princess is that you'll have a lot of different itineraries and departure points to choose from. Plus, the cruise line offers a variety of cruise lengths as well, with the traditional seven day cruises, as well as some longer voyages and their famous land and sea tours. And while almost every major cruise line has at least one ship sailing in Alaska in 2023, visiting Alaska is really more about the destinations and the ports of call. Regardless of the cruise line or itinerary, you can expect a pretty typical lineup of southeastern Alaskan ports of call on most contemporary cruise lines. Among the ports that cruise ships visit include Juneau, Ketchikan, Skagway, and Icy Strait Point or Sitka, sometimes replacing one of these options. Round trip sailings usually include a call into Victoria, British Columbia as well. What does differentiate Princess from the competition is its extended time in port and preferential docking locations. For instance, NCL docks at Ward Cove in Ketchikan, which requires transportation to get to the downtown area, unlike other cruise lines who dock closer to downtown. On our recent Majestic Princess sailing, we were literally in port all day. In Icy Street Point, we were docked from 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. We were in Juneau from 6.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. and Ketchikan from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. This is in contrast to other ships that may only dock from 7 a.m. to 1 p.m. in Juneau or Ketchikan, or for four to five hours in Victoria, British Columbia in the evening. So we can certainly attest that Princess Cruises does Alaska right when it comes to itinerary planning, as well as giving you the most time ashore at these popular destinations. We will be honest that the experience on the ships is a little bit different, especially if you're used to contemporary cruise lines. One con of sailing Princess Cruises is that their ships do have fewer bells and whistles. If you usually cruise with newer ships on cruise lines like Royal Caribbean, Norwegian Cruise Line, or Carnival Cruise Line, and you decide to sail with Princess Cruises, you might be disappointed in the onboard offerings. While Princess Cruise ships do feature all the cruise staples, you won't find any of those big ticket or popular attractions on any of their ships. 
This means you won't find skydiving simulators or bumper cars like you do on Royal Caribbean's Ovation of the Seas. Likewise, you're not going to find a racetrack, laser tag, or a virtual reality complex like you do on Norwegian Cruise Line's Norwegian Encore. If these types of signature attractions are a must for you or your kids, you should probably consider another cruise line than Princess Cruises. Likewise, you won't find Broadway shows on Princess Cruise ships either. While some Royal Caribbean and Norwegian Cruise Line ships feature signature entertainment venues and shows, Princess Productions are more akin to a traditional cruise ship review show. Further, you won't find any over-the-top theming at the bars and lounges or a high-energy nightlife. In fact, on our sailing, most bars close by 11 p.m. But with long days ashore and poor intensive itineraries, you might not care about all those flashy distractions on your ship anyway, as sailing to Alaska is really about the destination. So while Princess Cruises might not have the attractions and amenities these other cruise lines, one pro that's brand new for 2023 are the new Alaska food and beverage offerings. This is another reason we wanted to test out this cruise line again in Alaska, because honestly, we weren't overly impressed with the main dining room experience we had back in 2021. New for 2023, Princess Cruises is offering an expanded Wild for Alaska seafood menu. This includes a variety of seafood dishes in the main dining room, as well as a few specialties in the Willow Fresh Marketplace. Some of the dishes on the MDR menu that I really enjoyed included the wild Alaskan sockeye salmon, the Bering seafood stew, and the Alaskan ale braised short ribs. There were also other options like starters, like an Alaska crab cake or salmon cake, and other seafood dishes such as the Alaskan clot halibut. Further, the cruise line has brought on Alaskan wines, Alaska beer, and a few spirits sourced from local distilleries like an Anchorage whiskey. Now, the cruise line was touting that there will be special hot chocolate-based creations, themed frozen drinks, and cocktails made with these local spirits. However, they were not yet available on our Majestic Princess Sailing. One of the bar supervisors we spoke to did confirm that the bars had the recipes for these new cocktails, but they just weren't on the menus yet. And several of the bars we went to did not have all the ingredients necessary to make these drinks, even when we showed them the recipe cards shared with us by the bar supervisor. Further, when it came to dining, Majestic Princess is home to a brand new specialty restaurant. Replacing Bistro Cell La Mer on Deck 7, the Catch by Rudy is the first princess restaurant primarily devoted to seafood. The creative dishes and attractive price of $39 per person will lure you in. Of course, we had a chance to dine at the Catch during our sailing, and it was fabulous. While not much has changed in terms of theming in this venue, the food selections were certainly a step above the former Bistro Cell La Mer and the Catch now ranks as one of our favorite specialty restaurants in the Princess Cruise Line fleet. And if we're talking about food, another big pro of sailing with Princess Cruises is the best pizza at sea. The Cruise Line is consistently voted as having the best pizza at sea, and this is our third sailing with Princess Cruises, and we still agree with that assessment. On many ships in the fleet, Alfredo's or Gigi's serves up delicious handmade pies in a sit-down restaurant setting that is completely complimentary. Some ships do offer poolside pizzerias as well. However, when devouring your pizza, be sure to save room for dessert. Princess Cruises now features premium desserts with and without alcohol. These desserts are included in the Princess Plus and Princess Premier Fairs, or can be purchased a la carte otherwise. These Italian-inspired gelato treats are definitely Instagram-worthy. While many of the food options will entice you to book with Princess Cruises, one con of sailing with the cruise line that you need to know up front is that their entry-level staterooms, well, they leave a lot to be desired. Personally, one of our biggest cons of sailing with the cruise line are the lackluster entry-level staterooms. After 70 cruises with various cruise lines, there are just some things we've come to expect in our usual balcony cabin. Yet, they are missing with Princess. This means that you might need to upgrade your accommodations, which can increase your Alaska cruise costs. We upgraded to a premium deluxe balcony cabin for this sailing, given our previous experiences. In particular, a sofa or love seat, which comes standard in many competitor cruise line cabins, is not with Princess Cruises. Specifically, cruisers will need to upgrade to a deluxe balcony or mini suite in order to get a seating area in their stateroom. With more and more travelers never fully disconnecting on vacation and even working remotely, we think the extra seating is essential. 
Further, cruisers who have sailed with other lines might be surprised that even the newer ships in the Princess fleet still feature shower curtains in the bathroom. Yes, this means the dreaded clingy shower curtain while you're trying to bathe. While showering on a cruise ship is never ideal, this makes the situation even worse. Thankfully, Princess has finally listened and the new Sun Princess, debuting next year, will fix both of these issues. While the staterooms may not be up to par, another benefit of sailing with Princess Cruises is the medallion class experience. Now yes, you can watch our video here on YouTube where we break down everything you need to know about the medallion class, and you might still hear some people complaining about the technology. But for us, this technology makes your vacation more personalized and contactless, also more efficient. One of the highlights of the medallion class is Ocean Now, where you can actually order food and drinks anywhere on the ship. So whether you want to order a latte or a cappuccino to your stateroom while you're scouting for wildlife from your balcony, or a pina colada while lounging in the solarium, you can do so through the app. Perhaps the best part is those drinks are included in the Princess Cruises drink packages, so there are no additional fees or costs to order items through the Ocean Now app. Other benefits of the medallion class are the use of the wearable technology, which also includes keyless stateroom entry. We love the fact that we don't have to carry around a room keycard either. Your princess medallion can be worn in a watch band, a belt clip, a bracelet, or a necklace, which is how they give it to you when you check in, for added convenience. As you approach your stateroom, there's no need to fumble for your keycard, as the technology will sense your medallion and unlock your door for you. When you're at bars or restaurants and you order something, Servers don't need to scan your card or write down any information as servers are using tablets and they can identify you through the medallion. You can also use the technology to locate family and friends on board the ship, watch your mustard drill, and much more. It is true that many cruise lines offer enrichment opportunities when cruising to Alaska, but another pro of sailing with Princess Cruises is their North to Alaska program, which includes specially curated activities you're not gonna find anywhere else. These opportunities usually include talks by locals and experts on topics such as history, Alaskan culture, and the wildlife of the region. Some of the exclusives include fishermen who have been featured on The Deadliest Catch, Alaskan Lumberjacks. During our cruise, we had the opportunity to listen to Libby Riddles, who shared her story as the first woman to ever win the Iditarod race back in 1985. There are other themed events on board, like a night at the Klondike, the Midnight Sun Experience, and puppies in the piazza during your visit in Skagway, which unfortunately we didn't get to experience, and I didn't hear the end of it from my wife. Further, during scenic cruising through Glacier Bay National Park, the park ranger will come on board and provide real-time narration. Additionally, they will offer a formal presentation in the main theater with more in-depth information, not to mention an onboard naturalist who hosted regular talks in the main theater as well as during scenic cruising. All these North to Alaska programs should not be missed during your Princess Cruise. When it comes to other activities and events on Princess Cruises, we would say that they offer a pretty traditional cruise experience. Now for some, this might be a pro, but we'll be honest, for others, the nighttime activities and events throughout the cruise might be a con. As we mentioned before, when cruising to Alaska, your cruise ship often provides the backdrop as the main focal point here is the different ports of call and in general, regardless of the cruise line, Alaska cruises are a bit more relaxed. But on Princess Cruises, you won't feel overwhelmed by trying to do everything on the ship as well as ashore. We already mentioned that their ships don't have all those bells and whistles. Now that's not to say that there's nothing on these ships, right? Princess Cruises has bars, pools, a few different restaurants, and entertainment spaces that keep you occupied between ports of call. The cruise line has nightly production shows in the main theater, and the cruise director staff hosts events like trivia, game shows, and bingo. The cruise line also has its signature Movies Under the Stars, which regularly shows movies or other events like concerts during the day and the evening, and live music still occurs throughout the ship. Many of the ships also have a spa, fitness center, and casino. Princess Cruises still offers some kids programming to ensure Alaska cruises are fun and engaging for multi-generational families as well. However, many of their bars and lounges do lack theming, and there isn't much diversity in the live music in the evenings. If you're not into the game shows or the cruise director events like Yes or No or the Liars Club, 
you might be out of luck as there's not many other events happening throughout the ship. We would have liked more musical acts in different venues like the Vista Lounge, with most of the music staying centralized the Piazza. There wasn't that one place like a pub or piano bar you might find in other cruise lines where the late night crowd hangs out. So there are fewer options for different types of entertainment and activities, which may or may not appeal to you depending on your experiences cruising. Similarly, when it comes to an onboard experience, one of the other cons we notice of sailing with Princess Cruises is the quality of quick service or grab and go casual eat options on the ship. As we mentioned earlier, we do like Alfredo's Pizza and think it's some of the best pizza at sea, but on many of the ships, that restaurant is a sit down venue and trying to grab some pizza from there can take a half hour, 45 minutes, or even longer, depending how busy the venue is. And honestly, it's often very busy. There's also the International Cafe, which for one of us is one of the better cafes on any cruise line, which offers food 24 hours a day. So breakfast sandwiches in the morning with pastries and other continental items, and then sandwiches and small eats throughout the rest of the day. However, when compared to the competition, the World Fresh Marketplace or the Horizon Court, depending on which ship you're on, is a cruise line's buffet, and we really don't think it's well laid out. It often gets rather congested at peak times, and honestly, we don't find the food there to be all that appetizing. There is also the outdoor grill, though we were not impressed with the quality or preparation of the grill items during our visits. But we were more than happy grabbing items multiple times at the International Cafe, or just getting Alfredo's early so we didn't have to wait too long for a pizza. But if you're someone who's looking for a variety or easy quick and go options, Princess Cruises may not be best suited for you. Perhaps one of the biggest benefit of sailing with Princess Cruises are their brand new all-inclusive cruise vacation options. These include the Princess Plus and Princess Premier pricing options. These options might make sailing with Princess Cruises to Alaska a bit more attractive for those worried about nickeling and diming on other cruise lines. It is true, like most contemporary cruise lines, Princess Cruises standard fare includes most of the onboard amenities. There are still additional services and amenities not covered in the cruise price. Guests going for the upgrade from the Princess standard fare to the Princess Plus package, which is about $60 per person per day, receive one device of Wi-Fi per guest, the Plus beverage package, and that fare includes the crew incentive, which is also known as gratuities. This package also includes two premium desserts per cruise, two fitness classes per cruise, apparently so you can work off the dessert, and an unlimited juice bar. If you want a further upgrade to have your cruise be truly more inclusive, the Princess Premier package at $80 per person per day includes the Premier beverage package, which of course covers more drinks, Wi-Fi for four devices, that cruise gratuity, two specialty dining meals per guest, as well as a photo package, unlimited premium dessert, unlimited fitness classes, unlimited juice bar, a reserved seating section in the theater, which honestly was only there for the signature shows, not for the headliner acts, and entries to win princess prizes. So depending on your budget, Princess Cruises offers a variety of pricing categories from their standard fare to the plus, which is what we had to the premium. But honestly, the plus was perfect for us. Most of the drinks that we consumed were part of that package. I think only a couple of times did I have to pay more than the $15 allotment. And honestly, that was to try some of the Alaska spirits because those were some of the most expensive. We definitely made use of our premium desserts, <laughs> but I don't know if I need unlimited premium desserts as well as the Wi-Fi. So for us, the Princess Plus pricing was a great value, which is just another benefit of sailing with Princess Cruises. Now that you know whether Princess Cruises is right for your next Alaska cruise, you need to start planning. Lucky for you, we have our exclusive 25 expert cruise tips and tricks for any Alaska cruise right here on YouTube. In that video, we break down everything you need to know about cruising in Alaska, regardless of which cruise line you choose. We cover everything from planning your trip, booking, finding shore excursions, packing, making most of your time on board and ashore, our expert Alaska tips and tricks will help you ensure your next cruise is smooth sailing.